coming back to Texas for a moment, let's get your view here. And I know you guys are working on this, but talk about how you guys are going to grow your presence and production base in Texas here. I mean, you have a very nice baseline. Expand a little bit more on what you said earlier. What's the plan with Texas here? You know, as uh, if anybody who's uh, followed Encore for a while, uh, we have what's you know a large what we call database, and so and I've brought in some experienced uh, a couple of experienced geologists to to uh, help out with uh, uh, the the uh, planning and 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 acquisition approach. So we we are actively leasing properties now, uh, and. Uh, and mineral interest to with within areas that have known resources, and uh, it doesn't take much. There's you know there's no real need to go out and do any greenfield exploration. There, the back in the 70s and 80s, there was tremendous amounts of exploration that was done in South Texas because it was seen as the upside uh, for some of these companies, whether it's Conoco or Exxon or any of those what we've been able to do is acquire the data and information on those properties and right now we're in the process of exploiting that database focusing on a couple of targets right now that have known resources on them and, and establishing those uh, in, as a uh, future production and getting those into the licensed uh, uh, capacity of rosita as well as we're looking at other projects to be to expand that out that uh, resource base that would feed Rosita. So it's a, we've got a strategy. Uh, the only challenge is keeping us from executing faster on it is bandwidth. And when I say bandwidth, it's just that I've got be judicious on how you know on how many people we bring, you know, hire, et cetera. So we're trying to I'm trying to manage the bandwidth of our our people to be able to uh, keep assessing properties. But I'd say we're very active on that. And it's getting pretty exciting. We've had some successes, I would say, and I, I can't go into the details, obviously, because they're private transactions. But uh, I can say we've been successful, and it's uh, it's exciting, and it uh, helps form up what I believe is our strategy going forward. And I do see future opportunities as well for bigger targets. That's the one thing that uh, gets. Uh, but we got to start a little to get. The production feed coming in for Rosita, so we can establish that of cash flow to do the other acquisitions rather than do, or or at least have the ability to support any financing through revenue to be able to support expansion to further projects. Because I think there's a whole lot of opportunity there. A lot of people don't realize is that Texas did produce historically produced over 80 million pounds of uranium, and a lot of that, about half of that, is through in situ recovery. And then on top of that. There's just a tremendous amount of opportunities. The USGS has done some wonderful work on, on assessing, looking at all the historic data and the historic NURI data, and there's just a tremendous amount of resources down there that provide a lot of upside uh, and opportunity. And I'm not talking blue sky, I'm talking about near term, you know, it's near term uh, opportunities. And we're, we're working on that right now. Like I said, it's pretty exciting for me. I, you know, we get good news every week that, uh, yep, we're, we're on we're on track and and uh, I think that's an opportunity now like I said uh, it's going to take a lot of work to build the critical mass to make this a long term when I say long term a big big enough uh, resource base uh, to where we could very likely operate both Kingsville and Rosita that's simultaneously but I that's what we're working on 